This is your average hockey fan here again, Scotty2 Hockey. That's the new name I put on my page, and I wanted to change back to Mr. Average Hockey Fan, but it wouldn't let me do it, so it's Scotty2 Hockey for now for the next 90 days, according to YouTube, so hope you enjoy it. Uh, this is a topic I've liked to talk about for a while since he came to the team. Definitely a great addition. I'm pretty sure most fans would agree with me for sure, but Max Domi and the impact he's had on this team, and God, has it ever been great. Um, we were desperately in need of center depth. Domi came over from Arizona as a left wing. He didn't work out as a center in Arizona. It's really notable. He's only had eight goals the past two seasons in a row. Uh, four of them were empty netters last year. And he had a lot of assists, 40 odd assists, but it was considered a struggling year for Max Domi. And especially the prospect he was coming into the league. Uh, but uh, ever since he's been traded to Montreal for Alex Galchenyuk, who I will get into why we won that trade so far. Uh, ever since he's come to Montreal, he's been nothing but an impact player, and he's added to our center depth. He's currently our number two center, who slots in as a number one some nights. It's between him and Deneau as the number one, number two center. Each night, it's every now and then, they switch it up, I see him. Uh, he's currently on the line with Lekkinen, Domi, and, or Lekkinen and Tatar, excuse me. Lekkinen and Tatar, and Domi's in the middle. He's centering the lineup with Lekkinen and Tatar. Most of the year, he's played with Gallagher and... Uh, uh, most of the year he's played with Drewan, excuse me, and uh, Lekkinen's been slotted in there a few times, Barr and Shy, they've switched that up, but it's mainly been Domi and Drewan on the line for uh, about 90% of the year. It was only about a couple games ago Claude Julien switched it up, and it's helped the offense a lot, even though Domi and Drewan were clicking a lot at the beginning of the year, but they're such similar players, I don't, they're both pass-first players, that it was getting to the point where neither one of them were shooting. Domi was shooting a lot in the beginning of the year, but... Uh, throughout the year, I guess he wanted to get Drew Ann going, maybe, and Drew Ann was going for a bit, but they slowed down goal wise and they weren't producing like they were. So, as Julian called it, it started to get a bit stale, so he decided to switch it up, which was a great idea. But uh, so far from Max Domi, he's our number two center. So, yeah, so far he's our number two center, and uh, his cap hit is a very reasonable, very good. 3.15 million. He signed up until next year, so the rest of the season and the rest of next season, and I'm sure he will be extended the way he's playing, and I'm sure he'll get a raise, which is well deserved so far in Montreal. So far in 50 games played in Montreal, he has 16 goals, so double what he had in Arizona last year, and his combined two years together, he has that many goals in Montreal already in 50 games that he's had in over 140 something in Arizona. Uh, he has 44 points, he has 16 goals, 28 assists. He's always been good on assists, even in Arizona he was struggling. Uh, he had 40-something assists, and at 42 assists, if I'm not mistaken, and that was considered a bad year for Domi. He's a bit of an aggressive player, but usually his physical uh, his physicalness and his chirpiness and his always getting under player's skin and always chirping, always behind net battling, usually it helps the team. It's a spark plug, but lately, the past like 10 games or so, it has hurt the team a bit. He's took some late penalties that have been costly, and he's done some really undisciplined, dumb things like instigating fights, and then he'll, they'll both get the fight penalty, and Domi will get the extra two minutes for instigating it. He's done things like that, which have been costly, which have hurt the team at times, but he has has made it up for it as well because uh, in those uh, 16 goals he got two of them are game winners he has 59 penalty minutes which isn't very great I, will, I would like to see him get those penalty minutes down yes he like he's a physical player the physicality helps him get going you could see when he's really amped up when he's going with our players and he's really into the game he really starts driving and really starts trying to get it going for a little bit, he was slumping goal-wise. His first, like, 30 games, he had, to, he had like, 14 goals. And then he went, to, I think it was 16 games with only one goal. But lately, the past three games, he has two goals and an assist. So he's been picking it up for sure. He's a plus six, which is great. Because a lot of our forwards are they're plus players now, but are known to be minus players. Like Jeff Petrie is one of our best defensemen. He's killing it all year, but he's still a minus player. So he's a plus six on a team that has a couple of minus players that probably shouldn't be minus players. <clears throat> uh, he has a 14.7 shooting percentage. So that's better than a lot of players. That's up there with like Kucherov. That's up there with like the top 10 in the league shooting percentage wise. So 14.7. And his shooting percentage has gone down where he had that bit of a goal slump. But at the beginning of the year, his first 30 games, his shooting percentage was amazing. It was unreal. Uh, he has 39 hits. Very physical player. He probably could have more hits the way he plays. But he does like to open up a lot of space. And he's a very creative player. 
Uh, not only this year is he a goal-scoring threat, he has 28 assists, and it's only 50 games in. The guy's setting up so many plays. There's been a few plays where he set up an assist and even scored a goal where it's been turned back through the goaltender, goaltender interference. There's one I remember where Mete scored his first goal, and I'm pretty sure Domi assisted on that, and Sha ended up interfering with the goalie, and it got took him back. And there's one a couple of games ago where Domi was on his back, and he was whacking at the puck, and it went in as he was fouled or something, and something happened that it ended up being a goaltender interference. I think uh, Lekkinen batted the puck out of the goalie's hand is what it was, and it ended up being goaltender interference. So that's another goal that I took away from Domi. But he's been great so far. 50 games in, and he already has more goals than what he had in two years in Arizona. If that doesn't speak volumes, I don't know what does. This was a very criticized trade when he got traded for Alex Galchenyuk because Alex Galchenyuk was a guy who was supposed to eventually be our number one center even though in five years he couldn't cut it as a center. He played about a year and a half, two years where he was decent at center. Defensively, he wasn't good, but offensively he brought it and he made up for a lot of his defensive lapses by producing offensively. But the past three years, he's done nothing but struggle. He's been back and forth. He's been from the fourth line to the third line to the first line. He's been from center back to the left wing. He's been on the power Power play has been taken off the power play. So a lot of these reasons are the reasons why Galchenyuk got traded. And a lot of the struggles Domi had in Arizona, which was similar things, are the reasons why Domi got traded. And both had injury troubles for a bit. But Gal Galchenyuk's was a bit more serious because he required surgery. But he hasn't been the same player since. And uh, in my opinion, we've won this trade. I'm going to tell you some reasons why we've won this trade. Galchenyuk's played less games due to injury. But like I said, he's become an injury prone. He hasn't been the same since. And... Uh, if he has 12 le no he has 19 less points than Domi. Domi got 44 points. Galchenyuk only has uh 23 points if I'm not mistaken. No, 25 points. So Galchenyuk's 19 points less than Domi in about 10 less games played maybe something like that. But not only that, he's on a team that isn't a playoff team that should be a playoff team. That coming into this year, even though they're Arizona, people said they'd be better than Montreal because they had Clayton Keller. They had Oliver ekman Larson, They got the Galchenyuk trade. They got Rick Tockett as a coach. Things were supposed to come together for Arizona. And Galchenyuk's doing the exact same thing he did in Montreal he did in Arizona. Or in Arizona he did in Montreal. Showing up when he wants to. Being lazy some nights. Not producing when he has to, being a streaky player and not somebody who can depend on and not being able to play center. They tried him at center for about 20 games or 15 games and he's been right back to the left wing. He's uh, pretty decent under power play. He's not bad under power play. He's doing better under power play than Domi's doing on ours. But Domi's never really been a big power play point producer. Currently, he's on our second power play lineup. He only has three goals and uh, he only has three goals and six assists no he has yeah three goal six power play points three goals three assists so that's all he has all year he has three goals three assists on the power play his career total for power play goals is only eight so he has over he has almost half his power play goals in montreal already in 50 games than what he had in three years in arizona so as much as our power play is struggling and it's very much so is struggling domi's doing pretty decent on the power play i guess he's He's one of the few who's doing all right. That's the best you can say for him is all right. Our power play is 31st in the league, 12.6, completely unacceptable. Uh, Domi wasn't really supposed to come in and 100% change our power play. Yes, we were going to use him as a center, but Drew Ann's supposed to be the quarterback of the power play, and Drew Ann's on a completely different line. Drew Ann's on the first line. Domi's on the second line with uh, Agostino, Kakaniemi, and Domi. They got Domi on the wing, and they got Kakaniemi playing center on that line. And you got Tatar and Petrie pretty much as his defenseman. Tatar is a defenseman, but on the power play, he pretty much plays as a defenseman in his position. And they're 31st, 12.6. So the only knock on Domi that I can say this year is his power play numbers could be better. I'd like to see him stepping up on the power play. But as far as consistency, he brings it every night. He produces every night. He has 44 points in 50 games, so he's almost bringing a point tonight. He scores big goals. He's a very, very... He's a fan favorite for sure, and he's a very, very fired up player. He gets the teams going. He's always smiling. He's super humble when he talks to the media. He always mentions his other teammates. He's never all about himself. His father is a famous Leaf, so it's great to see his son tearing it up in Montreal. It's almost like a slap in the face to Leafs fans. For us Habs fans, it's great to see Todd Omi rocking Habs jerseys and seeing Domi producing. So he's been nothing but a very great pickup. 
Uh, I think we've won that trade so far. Only time will tell. Still a lot of time to go yet in both their careers. They're both only 20. Well, I'm not sure if Galchenyuk. I think Galchenyuk's a bit older, 26. Some Domi's only 23 years old. And only five years ago was in the World Juniors lighting it up with Connor McDavid. So he's a beast for sure. And he was a really, really good junior player. One of the best junior players. Highly talented prospect. And I feel he's living up to his potential in Montreal now that he should have in Arizona. He had a pretty good rookie year. But already this year in Montreal, he's far surpassing that rookie year, and he's going to have career highs this year, barring injury or something like that. Knock on wood, that never happens. Hopefully, he stays healthy all year. He looks like the type of guy that's going to stay healthy. He's in great shape. Uh, but yeah, those are my thoughts on Domi. Uh, I'd like to see him back with Drew Ann and maybe get another another winger that we, they can get a good chemistry with. Maybe when Shaw comes back, have uh, Shaw, Drew Ann, and Domi again, because I like that line for shorter all great players, and I like the chemistry him and Drew Ann had, that was a dynamic duo, I was kind of sad when they got broke up, even though they've both been producing since, if they could get them back together and get them producing like they were, I'd love to see it, Max Domi's been an excellent have, him and Thomas Tatar have made a massive impact on his team, truly massive, like, the guys have, two of those guys, I don't want to say single-handedly, but are like 50% of the reason why this team is so good. Such an upgrade from the negative-minded Max Pacioretty, who was streaky as hell, and Alex Galchenyuk, who was lazy and played when he wanted to, in my opinion, and injury-prone. So, those are my thoughts on Max Domi. If you disagree or agree, feel free to leave a comment, and hopefully you liked the video. If you do, like and subscribe. This is Scotty2Hockey, a.k.a. Mr. Average Hockey Fan, with my thoughts on the impact Max Domi's had for the Montreal Canadiens. Go Habs, go, baby!